Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I wanna tell you about this lens that I've been using the past few months. This is the Tamron 70 to 300 at 4.5 to 6.3 telephoto lens. I, I wanted to see how it performed in a lot of the conditions that outdoor photographers and landscape photographers photograph in and just see how it performs. Now, before we get started, this video isn't sponsored by Tamron. This is a completely non-biased review. They just sent me the lens and had me test it out and try it out and see what the pros and cons for it were. And honestly, I was fascinated to try this lens out. I, I, I love trying new lenses out. I think they're really interesting. And I had a lot of questions for this lens before I got started especially of how it would perform in different scenarios. And we'll get into why I, I had those questions, but throughout this, I wanna cover the pros and cons of what I found and also what you may want to watch for when you are purchasing this lens or if you're interested in purchasing it too. So first off, the big thing is size and weight. This lens is touted by Tamron as being the lightest and smallest telephoto zoom on the market and I would Definitely have to agree with that. It's extremely short and it's extremely lightweight. When I hold it in my hand and when I first got it, I was kind of surprised that it didn't have a footer on it to attach to my tripod, whereas a lot of those telephoto lenses are gonna have that footer. What I loved about it is it's so light, you can just attach it to your camera and strap it on to your L bracket and put that right on your tripod. You don't have to fool around with an extra footer when you are trying to put that on your camera and keep everything stabilized and still. So size and weight is definitely a huge part of this lens. And one of the biggest factors that I would consider being a pro for this lens, if you're considering buying it, because as landscape photographers, when we go out into the field, we don't want to weigh down our bag so much with extra equipment or longer lenses, you know, especially if you're going out for a few days of backpacking, you don't want a lot of extra weight added by your camera equipment. So this definitely checks the box uh, of size and weight. Now there are some concerns there, which I'll get to at the end of this video, but just to compare it, you know, the telephoto lens I've been using for my landscape photography is the Sony 70 to 200 F4G lens. And it, this is a fantastic lens. I have another review on this lens too, and it does have the footer. It is, you know, pretty small and, and short for a telephoto lens, but it's also extremely heavy. And if I can show you the comparison here based on the size, you can see that the Sony lens, the 70 to 200 is a little bit longer, a little bit taller, much heavier as I'm holding it in my hand, probably about an inch and a half longer than the Tamron 70 to 300, which is very interesting because the 70 to 300 gives you extra 100 millimeters of zoom beyond the Sony lens. So when I'm thinking about size and weight and performance here and, and what it allows me to do, maybe packing another lens that I may need while I'm out in the field, you know, I would definitely go Tamron in that direction if you're looking for less gear that packs more punch into your camera bag. Now, I was also concerned a little bit about quality of this lens. A lot of people don't wanna go with a third-party lens because they are a little bit worried about the quality. Is it gonna be there? Is it gonna match a G Master lens like Sony has? I was really pleased with the performance and the quality of this lens. I tested it in a lot of different conditions and a lot of different techniques, one of them being time-lapse photography. So I had my time-lapses running with this lens and they stayed very stable. And I think that's attributed to the size and weight of this and not having a footer on it because I feel like my camera and lens is more stable without a footer and just attached to an L bracket to my tripod and getting those shots and staying really, really still throughout. And even on some of the still images, if you look and the sides and the corners of those images, you still get really crisp, sharp lines. And you know, with camera technology and camera sensors now, if you're using something like I was using with this, with a A7R, too, and, and having that Sony E-mount mount with this, this is a Sony E-mount lens. If you're using that, obviously you have a very good sensor and I wouldn't worry too much about image quality here. The glass in this is very, very good. So that's a plus too. But for the most part, 
our camera technology is so good now, you shouldn't worry too much about that unless you're buying something like a kit lens to start out with. Some of those can be a little iffy, but a lens like this, you know, is not gonna pose you too much of an issue with quality in that. Another thing that I was concerned about when I was using this lens is how well it would perform handheld at long distances. So I zoomed this in at 300 millimeters to get some of these images here. And I was worried about hand holding this, especially with like a waterfall scene, but I would get it about 1 40th of a second and up and still get a little bit of motion in the waterfall. But I was worried that having it that far zoomed in and also handheld would kind of give me a little bit of shake in some of these subjects. But I found that with the Sony's IBIS system, the in-body image stabilization system, that I didn't get a whole lot of shake going on here. So I was really pleased with that. You wouldn't have to worry about that going on like if you do wildlife photography too or a wildlife safari, if you're bouncing around in a vehicle, you wouldn't have to be too concerned about that either. So that checks a box for me on this lens for that too. Now, let's get to some of the cons here. You know, with using this lens for so many years, I'm not concerned about water and moisture getting into this because it is weather sealed, everything is internalized. So I can zoom this and all the zoom is controlled inside the barrel of the lens and I don't have to worry about extra moisture getting in if I'm zooming in and out and I'm photographing in some rainy drizzly conditions. So I love that about this lens. It's probably one of my favorite things. It feels very sturdy, it feels very metal. Uh, even though I have broken this lens and had to repair it, that also fell off of the top of my car. So it was several feet to the drop and just smash on the ground. I'm never really too worried about this breaking though. On the other hand, this lens feels a little bit more plasticky in build and it feels just a little bit less weather sealed than this one. And they don't say it's weather sealed. It's not touted as that. But I, I will say I did photograph one day in drizzly conditions and I didn't have any problem with moisture getting inside. Even though I can't like look inside of this lens and see that moisture, I didn't have any problem showing up with the lens and drying it out later. But it's not touted as being weather sealed. Would I photograph in drizzly conditions in both of these lenses? Yes. A little bit more of a downpour, I would probably put this one away and photograph with this one. Definitely wouldn't photograph with the Tamron in an all out deluge of rain coming down. Uh, definitely not built for that. So if that's the kind of stuff you photograph in or get caught in sometimes, I would highly question purchasing this. The other thing is that it is not internalized zoom, which I was a little bit disappointed with, but I guess with the size and weight of this, having all that internal, would make it longer and a little bit heavier. So again, if I zoom out to 300 millimeters, that zoom shaft comes out and you can see that it adds length to your lens. Again, I would worry about moisture getting into that if I was photographing in some heavy rain out in the field. But overall, when I was photographing in some drizzly conditions, I didn't see that when I did have this zoomed in pretty far, not all the way to 300, but pretty far, probably like between 100 and 200, that's what I was doing. So overall, this is a fantastic lens to get. If you're worried about size and weight, I would go with the Tamron. If you're worried about weather conditions, I might stick with the Sony or more of a weather sealed camera. But for the price difference of these and being able to get something like an extra 100 millimeters in extra range with the Tamron lens, it's definitely more of a bang for your buck if you want to go that route. You just have to weigh the pros and cons for you and your own photography when you are purchasing that. Now, there is a link to purchase the Tamron lens in the video description as an affiliate link and also in pinned to the comment section. If I didn't answer any of your questions that you have, I would love for you to ask those in the comment section and I'll get to those as soon as possible and help you with the decision to purchase this maybe. Again, I'm not sponsored by Tamron. These are unbiased reviews and I hope they helped you with your decision on whether or not to get this lens.